The Democratic Republic of the Congo goes to the COP27 summit in Egypt with several proposals to tackle climate change. Our envoy Oscar Repeldo gave us the details. The Democratic Republic of the Congo presents itself as a solution country to the greenhouse effect, promising that the lung of the Congo Basin will keep intact its ability to absorb carbon dioxide. To this end, it asks for sustainable financing for its adaptation so that it can grow a green economy that can provide solutions to poverty and to the basic needs that the population still endures. The Congolese cosmos is a model of the complexity of climate action. I propose that you come with me to the stand of this country. The Democratic Republic of the Congo wants developed countries to respect their commitments because they are primarily responsible for emissions. The failure of developed countries to meet their commitments to finance adaptation is the first thing we hear about. The other message that is repeated is the enormous potential of the Congo Basin. When you have a country with such environmental potential in terms of global warming mitigation, it is important that the efforts of that country in implementing nature-based solutions are rewarded. But at the same time, movements and activists who are not present in this official message denounce the mismanagement of natural resources, corruption in governance, and multiple cases of illegal and irresponsible exploitation, both of carbons and minerals. In this context, the government has put up for action several old blocks that could affect the peatlands. Today we are losing the fight to safeguard the environment, we are losing the fight against deforestation, we are losing the fight for conservation, we are losing the fight to move towards a more sustainable development. If we have more money to thanks to all, maybe we can do more. However, can it be expected that the populations that depend on ecosystem services will be reasonably compensated if all is exploited? Will they really benefit from the exploitation? These questions justify the fact that funding from developing countries to protect tropical rainforests will never be sufficient. They strengthen the government's determination to resort to oil, a win-win situation for both parties, but the Congolese and the entire planet's population lose out. The future therefore depends on two aspects. On the one hand, on the articulation of sustainable financing for adaptation, but on the other hand, the way in which both financing and natural resources will be managed.